I'd like to share with you a new surgical technique for DMET graft unfolding that is particularly useful in really complicated eyes. This is a case that we did just last week, a few days ago, and this eye is aphakic and aneuritic with a decompensated PK and no visibility. I'm starting the case by putting a chandelier illuminator into the pars plana and then I'm stretching this cat's cradle network of proline suture across the anterior chamber. The reason is, is that with no iris diaphragm at all and no lens in the eye, otherwise, when you inject the DMAC graft, it's just going to fall directly back into the back of the eye. So in order to prevent that, you can create a little meshwork of suture, a web to unfold the graft on top of. This idea is not original with me. It came from a brilliant YouTube video from Bruce Allen, a corneal specialist in the UK, and he described this technique of stretching this proline suture across the eye. I found when using it, it's nice to use a long, straight needle, which is easier to pass across the entire anterior chamber. You make between five and seven horizontal passes, and then you turn and make five to seven horizontal passes in a crisscross direction. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm making a network of crisscrossing proline sutures across the anterior chamber. And then once I've done that, you can tie those stitches outside of the eye and that creates a little trampoline for unfolding the graft on top of. And you can make as many of these little passes if you want, as you want to give yourself more support. But once you're confident that you put in enough proline sutures to give yourself a little bit of backboard to unfold, then you can make your ancillary incisions, your paracentesis, and your main wound. Here I'm being really careful not to cut those stitches that I just spent so much time stretching across the eye, but I like to make the incisions after I make the stitches because as Bruce Allen demonstrates in his video, the eye is more stable, it stays open, it stays formed better when you do that way, as opposed to making the incisions and then trying to pass the stitches. So here I am just sort of inflating the eye with balanced salt solution, and now I'm ready to inject the graft. Now this is a perilous time during the operation because if you're not careful and you overly forcefully inject this graft, you can shoot it through that webbing down into the back of the eye. So it's not too late to ruin the case here. And that's why when I'm injecting the graft, the way that I do it is I first load the graft way down next to the tip of the end of the injector, such that it's just hanging out basically ready to inject. And the other thing I do is I make sure that there are no air bubbles up inside the injector, which can be compressed. And as you depress the plunger on your injector, you're compressing the bubble and then they release and you get this explosion of the graft into the eye. So it's very important to inject the graft in a controlled manner. And I'm kind of angling up a little bit and I'm injecting the graft and you'll notice that I just kind of barely puff it out into the anterior chamber. My visibility here is facilitated drastically by the use of this chandelier illuminator. And I've got the microscope light off and I have the chandelier illuminator in the pars plana and the graft just kind of carefully glides out of the eye into the anterior chamber on top of this trampoline web. Now you'll notice I have a bubble here in the anterior chamber and the first step of course is to remove this bubble because the bubble competes with me for control over the tissue, makes it more difficult for me to assess what's going on with the edge of the graft. So here I'm looking at the tissue. Now it's very important. Normally when I use DMAC tissue, I ask the eye bank to give me grafts from an, a, a donor 50 years old or older. But when you're doing DMAC in eyes with a hyper deep chamber, what you typically want is a loosely scrolled graft, okay? Because you can't really get any compression to open the graft up. 
So you need a graft that naturally wants to open up. So you want to use an older tissue. So I specified for this case, and I specify for many of my cases with hyper deep chambers that I want a donor 70 years old or older. Now normally what I emphasize in my videos about DMEC and hyper deep chambers is you want to use a large graft. A large graft is nice because it stretches across the anterior chamber. You can wedge it in the nasal and temporal angle and you can get compression from the graft interacting with the angle to help you open it up. In this case though, I can't use a large graft because I've got a PK and the DMET graft cannot overlap the PK interface or it'll detach. So I have to use a small graft. This is a 7.0 millimeter DMET graft. So it's small. And the only chance I have for opening it then is to use a loose roll. So for these hyper deep chambers where you have to use a small graft, I recommend using an older donor. So here I am, I've just injected the graft in the eye and I can't really tell its orientation. I'm trying to check the Motsuro sign and wouldn't you know it, it, the graft is upside down. This looks like it is injected upside down. And what a bummer, what a shame. If the graft were right side up, then probably we would be almost done. But of course, you know our luck, the graft is upside down. And so what do we do? It's not gonna be easy to flip or flush the graft because you don't have some IOL diaphragm, some backboard to get the jets of fluid to wash back up, to get a turbulent cycle. And you worry about injecting fluid into the eye what are you going to do? So here the graft is tantalizingly two-thirds of the way open and yet it seems to be upside down. You don't want to flush it into the back of the eye. Taps on the corneal surface, you know, how in the world are you going to do it? Well, what I recommend in this case is a new surgical technique that I'd like to describe called the pin and roll. And the way that this works is you use a coaxial forcep to grab the graft from underneath. Here I am trying to make a little paracentesis. The eye is soft and I'm careful because I don't want to accidentally cut this proline suture. So at first I try to make a paracentesis and then I decide, no, better not mess with it. I'm just gonna use the main wound. So what I'm doing is I'm going underneath the graft with a pair of coaxial forceps. The curl of the graft is down and I'm gonna grab that curl with my forcep and I'm gonna pull it to the side. And as I pull over to the side, I'm gonna tap the surface of the cornea. So I'm gonna rotate the graft, I'm gonna spin it upside down by grabbing this curled edge underneath and dragging it laterally while I apply these countervailing taps on the corneal surface. So here we go. So I'm grabbing the graft and I'm pulling it as I tap on the surface of the eye. So this is how you flip the graft upside down in an eye where the graft is injected upside down and you worry about flushing the graft in the anterior chamber. So now the graft is almost totally unfolded. It's right side up. This is a tricky part, the coaxial forcep. You have to be careful that it doesn't stick to the graft. And unfortunately, I myself have gotten too zealous. I flip the graft over and then I rip the coaxial forcep out and the graft is stuck to the edge and it comes with the forcep out. And you think, oh my gosh, what an unforced error. But as long as you're careful and you wiggle the forcep, you can get the graft to disengage and here we are, the graft is mostly unfolded. There's that little lingering edge inferiorly. And at this point, what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna put an air bubble underneath the graft. And you'll notice the bubble, it was immediately underneath the graft and then it sort of dipped down. It's now behind the proline webbing. And I haven't actually realized that during the case, so I'm gonna put a second bubble in and these bubbles are sort of awkwardly combining and competing. They're not really supporting the graft yet. They're kind of behind the proline. And you'll notice as the bubble fills off to the side a bit, the graft is inferiorly decentered. And so I'm sort of noticing that this really is not working. 
So what do we do? It seems like we're in a little bit of a winning position. The graph seems to be right side up. It's up against the back surface of the cornea. It's mostly unfolded, but it's decentered, and we have this large inward fold down at the edge. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these coaxial forceps, the ones that I'm so fond of, and I'm going to reach into the anterior chamber, and I'm going to grab the edge of the graft, and I'm just going to pull it over. And this is a very similar maneuver to what many people may be used to with DSEC. You know, with DSEC, you grab and pull the DSEC lenticule, or you engage it with an inverted Sinsky hook or with a bent needle all the time. Well, the DMAC graft is a little bit more delicate, but it's still surprisingly amenable to these direct manipulations just by grabbing the tissue and pulling it over. And you can do it bit by bit. You can move the graft over a bit, and then you can go back and reach down a different location and drag it up again. In this situation, the trick is going to be for me to reduce the size of the bubble a little bit. So here I am, I'm just moving it around a little bit. I'm tapping over at the edge. But what really helps me finish this unfolding is I put some fluid into the eye to shrink the bubble. And when the bubble gets smaller, then I can just sort of tap the edge of the graft and even use the cannula just directly to poke it over like that. So now I've got the graft totally unfolded. I've got a bubble occupying about 70% of the volume of the anterior chamber. And then I can just fully inflate the eye the rest of the way with a little bit of air. And you'll notice as the air goes in, it's apparent that the graft is totally unfolded up against the back surface of the cornea. Here we are. And this is the conclusion of the case. There's our graft in perfect position up against the back surface of the cornea. And that the way the operation concludes then is I just cut all of these proline stitches that have been running across the anterior chamber and just pull them out and then remove the chandelier illuminator. And that way you don't leave anything extra behind. These stitches, you don't have to come back and get them later. So I think that you know this was a fun case for me doing DMAC in an eye with a failed PK, that small diameter that's aphakic and aneuritic with poor visibility. But the trick for this operation is just to do a handful of little combination tactics, you know, to use a chandelier illuminator, which gives you so much better visibility than you would get doing anything else, um, to use this little cat's cradle basket suture technique pioneered by Bruce Allen. But, you know, for me, the part, the sort of the technique that made the operation possible to do was understanding how to manipulate the graft inside of the eye predictably and reliably. And that's, I think, with this pin and roll technique, using those coaxial forceps to grab the graft from inside the eye from an underneath position and to pull laterally while applying these taps on the surface of the cornea. That's so handy. We use that all the time when we're doing DMEC in hyper deep chambers. Give it a shot and see if it doesn't make your cases more predictable and more fun.